Hi, ever wonder what it's like to work another profession or live in the underworld? Listen to Unsuspecting Riders give a 10 to 15 minute personal masterclass as I spontaneously interview them as they enter my taxi. I'm your host, Simon Rushton, and this is Taxi Chronicles. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today we have two gentlemen, but one of them doesn't want to be known. So we've got Matt and his mate, but I don't know if the mate's going to talk. But anyway, Matt is an expert at swimming and he teaches young people to swim. And for those who don't know, I plan to swim part of the coast of East Africa. It's about 600 kilometres. Um... And so this will be an interesting conversation for me, and I'll also be learning. So nice to have you here today, Matt. Hi, Simon. Nice to meet you. I think expert might be like high praise indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first things first. What kind of person were you when you were at school? Um. Oh, that's a big question. Probably, like, quite hard working, but a bit mouthy. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I. it was definitely one of those. I kind of, 14... I was always right. No one else could tell me any difference. And you kind of think the world's against you at that age. <laughs> okay. Uh, has things changed now? Um, yeah, I think so. I'm still a bit mouthy sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah. One of his mates is looking at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, when did you realise you wanted to get into swimming? Um, I kind of got into it by accident. So I was like... I'd swum since I was a kid with the same swim school, like kind of since I was three, and then. Um, since you're three. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was kind of really little. I've always You've got done gills. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So I like started becoming an assistant. Just like a position came up, thought oh, I'll I'll give it a try. Um, started it, fell in love with it, ended up teaching my own classes, and I've been doing it for like ten years or so now. Okay. So did you go to? So you've been doing it from a young age. You went yeah. for competitions, I assume, and all of those kind of things. Oh, uh, do you know what? I didn't compete. I, um, really? I tra- yeah, I trained with the squad a couple of times a week, but I'm, uh, I'm far too lazy to get out of bed at like four o'clock in the morning to go training. Okay, okay, okay. Well, so you teach it in schools then? Yeah, so I teach like um, mainly younger kids, but I've taught everyone from kind of like parent and babies to really old people, like women in their 80s she just kind of woke up one morning and was like oh I want to learn to swim before I die and then she did it was amazing how how long did it take you to teach her um so she was like pretty much complete beginner like she could kind of get in and she'd kind of pot around the shallow end of it um but it maybe took three months and she could do a length yeah most of it was confidence and yeah once she was kind of confident enough that it came quite quickly what are the secrets to learning to swim? <laughs> oh my gosh, secrets. I think for most people it is the confidence, like just getting used to that water on your face and like having your face underwater, not being able to breathe. I think once you've nailed that, it, the rest comes r- relatively easily. Yeah, I, uh, I used to teach my staff to swim when I was in Kenya. And we have, I don't know if you, I'm a big snorkeling fan. Oh, wow. And do you know there's these four face masks? Yeah, yeah. There's a funnel in the middle now. Yeah. And it's got the um, restrictor to stop water going in there. Yeah. When I gave them that, they just floated. Oh, cool. Because they were relaxed. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have to worry about breathing. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and stuff like that. So that was a big help in that kind of thing. Yeah, that's it. Once you once you can get people to relax, it makes so much difference. And like you say, like they float so much better. Everything just becomes so much easier. Have you ever had a client that you just thought you're never going to learn? Um, only my mum. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I've never been able to teach or like not able to teach anyone to swim apart from my mum. And it's only because we're far too similar and we just get argumentative. <laughs> so wait a minute, your mum... <laughs> well, at least you can recognise that your yeah. mum can swim but she sent you for swimming lessons yeah yeah so she was like she can't swim and um, she wanted all of me my brothers and my sister to uh, be able to swim she was like oh if you get into trouble or anything like yeah. you need Someone to get yourself pushes you in a pool at a pool party mm-hmm. yeah that's it you have problems yeah and stuff have you ever had to save anyone's life um thankfully nothing too dramatic like I've kind of 
pull people out who've been choking but you know there's kind of pat on the back and send them on their way but you know a lot of my mates have kind of given cpr and all of that kind of stuff so, so were you teaching them at the times you had to pull them out um no i was lifeguarding so uh i was kind of looking at the whole pool someone was just it was just kids like dicking about a bit so <laughs> one of them like went under for a bit longer than they were intended to and came up like coughing and spluttering so i just like okay. dragged them out Will they thank you for that extra life moment <laughs> Um, I think he was just a bit embarrassed more than anyone else, anything else. He was like eight, and you know when you're showing oh. off in front of your mates and then suddenly you're not as hard as you think you are. <laughs> okay. What's your most preferred uh, swim position? Um, I love front crawl. I really like it. I, um, it's, it's an energetic thing. It's an energy consuming. Yeah, yeah. It's um, like, I don't know. I've been out of the pool for so long now. It's... Uh, probably kill my shoulders the first time I get back in but it's uh is yeah my favorite when I've been swimming as training for the swim um I was training in the Olympic pool in East London oh yeah oh, oh, cool. and um obviously that's a big pool yeah yeah and they're always shutting for the Olympic people so yeah or nationals or whatever yeah yeah but you get free swimming lessons there oh wow well. yeah if you pay your monthly membership they got this thing called swim doctor where they get professionals or experts and, and they come in and just teach you how to sw enhance your swimming and stuff like that so I was doing that and what what became apparent to me was my legs I've got strong legs but they're, I just don't use them yeah and that was <laughs> like I was all about the upper upper body strength yeah but you've got to really she says it's 80 percent legs for 20 percent arms which I believe is designed to keep your body from getting exhausted yeah yeah i uh i swim the same i like i rely so much on my shoulders and then my legs just kind of drag along like yeah. a tail behind me mm -hmm. yeah no it's uh like so important for balance as well um, in all your years of teaching swimming what would you say you've learned that you wish you knew when you started um is it, don't take it too seriously and i know that sounds a bit strange because it's like you know there's so much potential for stuff to go wrong and like you do have to be really alert and stuff but you, i think you've just got to relax and form a connection with the people you're teaching and like kids and stuff like that initial rapport is so important and building that like everything else can come from there and just being able to relax and kind of go with it and try different things out and not be too worried about them not working out the way you're intending to but just yeah trying different things and building that rapport is it a case that somebody... Have you ever known someone to teach themselves to swim? No. Um, <laughs> because you think about it, you yeah. have to start from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Pe I think people can, like, teach themselves the basics and like stuff like that, but when, um, when they come in and, like, tell you they can swim and then they kind of spend half an hour thrashing about up the length, it's like... You, know, you can kind of do the basics, but there's so much kind of more efficient ways you could do swimming like that mm -hmm. do you find that there's an ego thing with men where they say yeah i can swim yes definitely oh my god definitely it's i found um people sometimes men particularly men can sometimes be really uncomfortable with admitting they like struggling or admitting they're scared um and so they kind of attack it splash about and kind of get out of breath after maybe five meters or something get frustrated and it's like if you just slow down relax kind of accept that you're not an expert accept that someone can like teach you and help you and overcome a bit of that fear mm -hmm. then uh like it makes everything so much easier but yeah it's definitely a <laughs> a men thing generally how do women approach swimming if men are egotistic generally women are a lot more kind of relaxed and a lot more open to um admitting that they're a bit nervous and you can kind of build up slowly whereas men tend to go in kind of all guns blazing and then wonder why they're kind of out of breath and struggling and like choking after a few meters mm -hmm. yeah. but that's a generalization like everyone yeah, I, learns yeah. differently but yeah, no, yeah. Just, we're just talking trends yeah <laughs> things that you notice yeah yeah I understand that. I understand. So what does the future hold for you? 
Oh my gosh, that's a big question. So at the start of the pandemic, I um, I was teaching in Australia, um, came home in March, um, ended up back at my parents, which really wasn't the plan. Um, so yeah, I think I'd love to go back out to Australia and carry on teaching there. Like, it's just really cool to go out city where I didn't know anyone and set up a bit of a life there and see how that goes. So yeah, I definitely love to go out there and um, I used to teach in the Olympic pool out there. Okay. So it was, uh, a big it was really cool. Pool. Yeah, that's it. And they, um, they had such a range of kind of people coming through because it was like this state sports centre. So you get all the athletes come through and but there was like, uh, in Melbourne. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have like all the athletes come through for training um but also like all the kids and they got really excited when they saw the athletes and stuff like that as well which was really yeah cool. it's a big motivation when i swim in the queen elizabeth uh, olympic pool and before the pandemic you see like 200 300 people going at it yeah the triathlon crews the the young counties the nationals um you know all these youth Young people have a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're preaching to the yeah, choir there. I mean, like, they're eight years old and they're just going back and forth, back yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah. You're like, please, you're making me look feel tired. Oh, let alone look bad. <laughs> me too. Me. Like classes of like eight year olds after school when they've got excited and yeah, yeah. yeah. Jumping in, they're going back and forth. Yeah. So last question. No, oh, furthermore, actually, we've, we've just jumped to area Melbourne. <laughs> what was that like living in Melbourne, living in Australia? Was um, there any big adapt? Yeah, do you know what? It wasn't as different as I thought it would be, and I, I kind of went with not much expectation. I didn't really know what I was kind of getting myself into. Just that I'd been on about going there for, you know, ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to kind of go out, give it a try, and see how see how I get on but um yeah it was amazing they uh I think kind of getting used to that Aussie culture and you know they're like some stereotypes are true as like Brits are a bit uptight <laughs> and like kind of reserved to start with um so, yeah it took a while to kind of relax and get into that but it was really nice once we did and yeah it's just a really nice kind of atmosphere okay that's good Good. Yeah, a lot more of like an active sporty culture than here as well. Yeah, yeah. It's sports every day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think we need that here because that will exhaust a lot of people. And then if, and especially the young people, I can't bother yeah. to go and stab someone today. I'm tired. <laughs> 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 yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Hope, hope, wish, wish. Yeah. What, um, we're a bit, uh, Taxi Chronicles, we're a big believer in sharing the gift. Sharing the gift is where you. Um, speak like you're speaking about yeah. your profession <laughs> in hope that a younger person will um, follow in your footsteps. Yeah. So what would be your advice to a younger person who wants to become a swimming instructor like yourself? Um, just kind of go along to your local swimming club or local swim school. Um, people are always, always grateful for like assistance and volunteers and stuff. And, you know, 99% of the swimming community is absolutely lovely and kind of want to share all that learning. And, you know, we do it between teachers ourselves and we always love kind of sharing with new people and we can definitely learn a lot from them too. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, anyone will be welcome at your local club and stuff like that. Is there any special courses they must do? Yeah, yeah. So you have to do um, like your two different courses. Your first one, um, you can become an assistant and then your second one you become a full teacher what's the course is called um the the swim england teaching aquatics so level one and level two and that's done for, is that like are they sitting in guild things um i don't know to be honest but i know like swim england kind of own the qualification but oh, i think great. they're accredited through like ofsted or something like that oh, okay. I understand. I know they're expensive courses um, yeah, they are, they are quite expensive, to be honest, but um, a lot of places do. Um, were they starting that? Do you know what they're starting at? Do you know what? I can't remember now. It's so long since I've done mine that I can't remember. I know they were quite expensive, but um, quite a lot of places will pay for them and then you work them back. So, like, you work the hours back and to, like, kind of pay off the, 
Do you have to do refreshes every five years or certain tests every so many years? Uh, no, there's no, there's nothing you have to do. So you, you could do these two courses and kind of be set for life. But you know, it's good practice to do a lot of CPDs and stuff like that. And um, Swim England do quite a lot of CPD courses and for like either refreshes and strokes or different things you're not sure about or kind of different areas like disability swimming and stuff like that okay that's good well last question <laughs> not least is what's the impact you want to have on the world oh my gosh now that is a, a big question i would love to kind of make sure everyone i don't know i want to in swimming i'd want everyone who comes through my door to come out happier more confident um, and more relaxed and then generally I think I just like a more equal society where kind of people of different minority intersection kind of um, identities feel happier confident safer going out in the world okay well thanks a lot for that much uh, appreciated cheers, and we wish you well We hope you liked that interview. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get the latest daily episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economy and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources? Then listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you will hear real investors with real stories from around the world Share the experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am.